Hello, this is David from DN Cognitive Counseling. Tonight we have a response to the last video that we did on the psychology of systematic racism, where I responded to Brian in his assessment of what he saw in the Amy Cooper video. Jen responds back. Hello and happy Thursday. I love this video. Thank you very much. I have to say I strongly disagree with your view of Brian. I believe in the statement, it takes a village, and I also believe it is never wrong time to do what is the right to do the right thing. We as a society agree to live together, abiding by the governing laws, whether we agree with them or not. I feel like it's our responsibility to say something when someone breaks them, especially when dealing with a public safety threat. I can't believe no one mentioned this yet, but dogs bite. No one thinks their dogs dog will until they do. They're our best friends and part of our families, but at the end of the day, they're animals. And unless you're the dog whisperer or have a professionally trained dog, no one can guarantee you that they won't lose control of it or you won't lose control of the dog. They can, they can be startled, scared, or distracted by food or another animal. It is irresponsible of a dog owner to have the dog off a leash where not permitted. And if I were there and had my kids or my dogs with me, I'd have the same, said exactly the same thing as Christian Cooper. Only I would not have been nearly as nice about it and probably would have called the police. But I don't live in one of the five boroughs. I'm not sure if the mentality of calling the police is different outside of the five boroughs, given the average wait times and such. I live in a community where we frequently parent each other's kids. We speak up for what's right, legal, and if kids are doing no good, we call them out on it, regardless of who, whose kids they are. This is our town, and we will be damned if we let our kids disrespect it or misrepresent who we are and what we are about it. We feel it is our responsibility as a community member, and it only makes the village better. The kids now, the kids, excuse me, the kids know they can't act a fool because they never know who's watching. It is everyone's responsibility to take care of the community, just like every family member has chores. Personally, I think if our communities were the same, the, the world would be a much better and safer place. And before anyone goes, oh, oh, goes all, well, her neighborhood must be safer, I, have a, I live in a community where the racial makeup is almost equal, whites, black, and Spanish. The fact that the fact that the fact that everything right now seems to be coming to a race really makes me want to cry it, it should be so insignificant right now but it is the most important thing anyway brian v once you kick his you have to now commit a crime where you could be arrested please understand that violence never solves anything First off, thank you very, very much, Jen, again, for your thoughtful and response and reply. And there are a couple of things here I thought were very important. Um, you are 1 million percent correct about the idea that nobody's talked about the ability for the dog to, uh, to bite people, at least that, not that I've seen. And you're absolutely right about dogs sometimes losing control. Even well-behaved dogs can lose control given a circumstance. And the issue that I was talking about her from was from Christian Cooper's own response, what he was talking about. Not all the other issues that could be and why there's a dog, dog leash law and all that kind of stuff. But the nature of what he was doing and why. But your, but your assessment is absolutely correct. Now you and Brian have a fundamental difference. And it's a fundamental difference today that a lot of people in school are facing. A lot of teachers tell their, their students about what's going on and they come to parent teachers conference. And it used to be that when a parent spoke to a teacher on Parent Teachers Conference, the, t the parent would go, oh, thank you so much. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to, I'm going to be telling my child about these issues. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Today, when a lot of teachers bring things to a parent's um, attention, well, what are you doing to cause that in my child? What, 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 what have you done about this? What, why? This must be your fault somehow. And the teachers get blamed for it. And it's a real problem in terms of the disciplinary aspect in, in, a, in a school. This mentality permeates life today. 
where everybody comes up with an excuse and a reason why what they believe is correct. There's a social, social psychologist, Mr. John uh, White. It. I don't know how to pronounce his web. Hate it, excuse me. H A I D T. Um, who talks about the idea that all morality uh, that people have becomes sacred to them. And what happens is, whether you're on the right or on the left, you circle around your own morality and you become blind to things that you don't want to hear. And he says what's nice is, is that when you have people of different points of view, it works off each other to keep everybody honest. Now you said something also very important. I don't even think you realized it yourself here, but you said... And before anyone goes, well, my neighborhood must be safer, I live in a community where racial makeup is almost equal. Racial equality or an equal situation has nothing to do with a safety of a neighborhood. In fact, you can go to white neighborhoods that are very poor, that are very unsafe. Safety more, has, more often has to do with the economic status of a community and less to do with the racial makeup of the community. It's one of my biggest issues that people have when it comes to aspects of race. That somehow they see people from a race and believe this is what those people are. Like example, white. Uh, and this is my biggest issue with the aspect of calling white people white. Because which white people? The French white people? The Polish white people? The... Um, the uh, I was about to say Spanish white people, but actually after George Zimmerman, we have Spanish white people in, in certain situations, uh, especially in the media. But you have Polish white people, you have um, you know uh, French, English, German, um, Italian, uh, Irish. Um, all those different white people are not the same. And if you take a look at social psychology, there are differences among those groups. And there are differences that are very, very disparaged. So um, income between certain groups could be much greater or less depending on their ethnic makeup. And the same thing is true of when they say black people or African American. I've come to learn through my years that there are people of dark skin color who do not like the term African American. They come from the islands generally, and they get very upset if you call them an African American. So you have to be careful with that term too, because not everybody likes that term. So this nature and this idea that these are uniform groups, that there are black people and white people and Spanish people, and they're all monolithic in their thinking and their ideology is incorrect. But what you do see is that in neighborhoods that are generally poorer, people that are economically at a disadvantage have much greater issues, higher crime rates, less resources, less support. Now that is true, which is why so many times people confuse economics with race. The African American middle class in this country do not suffer the same issues. Not to say that there is not still systematic racism against them, there is in studies as well, but they're not, they're not the same issues as somebody who's growing up in a poor situation or a poor or, or a neighborhood where the, they're economically deprived. And in those situations and what they have to deal with, the struggles are much greater. So the nature of saying, well, I grew up in a safe neighborhood, the safety of your neighborhood has nothing to do with its racial makeup. It has to do with its economic class. Now, when you grow up in a poor, poor neighborhood, even in poor white neighborhoods, the ability for robbery um, and, and crime increases dramatically. And that's just the nature. Now, that doesn't mean poverty causes crime. It doesn't. But the nature of the systems that support the people in those areas are generally depressed as well. People growing up in a single-parent home have a much greater effect. Um, so there are a lot of factors that are involved. But getting to Brian's point, Brian and you see the world very, very differently. Brian is more of an isolationist, believes in the idea of just watching as himself. And in the video, I think I gave you an African-American point of view at the end, where he talks about, listen, here I see uh, two white guys, they look suspicious, I'm leaving them alone. Now, he could have been like, well, what's going on here? What are they doing in my neighborhood? He could have had that attitude. He didn't. And for Brian, 
he may have a live and let live attitude. But you come from an idea that community is very strong and that everybody watches each other's back, which is another point of view and one that you're entitled to live by, which is what I was trying to get Brian to hear. You see, the two of you are on two opposites of a spectrum, but you're both legitimate. You both have every right to it. The idea is to be able to hear each other, be able to respect each other. And when we don't, we see something and go, wow, look at that. Doesn't mean just because I would not do something or you would do something, does that mean, mean the other person's wrong for not? This is what makes the world nice in the fact that we're all not automatons, all doing the same thing. We all have a right to either get involved or not get involved as long as it's in the context of the law. We have the right to say to somebody, is that okay? Are you doing, is everything okay over here? Now, the problem I have with a lot of the examples I gave was the motivation for the reasons why they got involved. Because the motivation had to do with stereotypes and specifically racial ones. And that's where people don't seem to always understand what, what, what people of another race have to deal with on a daily basis or a pretty consistent basis from people who are making judgments about them on a constant basis. And it doesn't feel good. The aspect of seeing two children with somebody and saying, well, is that the father or is that the mother? Okay, but is the, are the children struggling? Are the children saying, please help me? Are the children look afraid? I mean, all those things get involved in that. The nature of it just being a different skin color should not be the case. And could you imagine an interracial couple? Oh my God, are you okay, ma'am? Is he, is he kidnapping you? I mean, that would be incredibly disrespectful. But... Sometimes we're not thinking about that because we fall into racial stereotypes and we fall into what we think the world should look like. It'd be very, very nice if we all could try to perspective take, to learn from one another about our differences, to hear when we have a difference of opinion and be okay with it. The biggest issue that I deal with, with within families is the inability for somebody else to take the other person's point of view. I believe this, my mother or father does not believe this, I get, therefore now we bump heads and I can't respect them and they can't respect me. That's a problem. What we want to be able to do is hear them, them hear us, be able to know where we disagree and still love each other despite the fact that we disagree. No one's ever died from a disagreement. We all have the right to disagree with each other. We both can think of each other as being wrong about something but we have to do it respectfully. And Jen, I do agree with you, with the confines of the law, without assaulting people or putting ourselves into situations where we're gonna make bigger problems because of this. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you'll hit like if you like this video and share it with people who may be maybe helped by it for a different point of view. And if you didn't subscribe already, please do. If you disagree with anything I said, as Brian did, and as Jen disagree with Brian, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it and be able to respond. And again, if you like to become a patron to this, please hit the subscribe star link. I wish you a good night and good mental health.